What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my Game of the Year for 2016 series of videos. And as usual, your yearly reminder that I am just one dude, one man, in a bedroom, I can't play everything I'd love to, but as such, this is my top 10, opinions are subjective, and with that out of the way, this is my top 10 digital-only games for 2016. I played more than a few three-quarter overhead top-down twin dual joystick shooters this year, and the Deadly Tower of Monsters is another fantastic one. The hook for this game is that you are playing through a DVD commentary of a cult classic B-movie, and as someone who adores Mr. Science Theater 3000, this game was right up my alley. The most impressive part of the package here is the presentation, as the game does go out of its way to really nail those 50s and 60s B-movie special effects. As usual, Ace Team brings their own special blend of weirdness here as you climb this giant tower of monsters to eventually get to the end of the film. And while that singular playthrough is fantastic, it does not exactly lend to a lot of replayability. However, it does get in at a solid 10 on my list this year. Reigns, and I don't mean Roman, was a fantastic mobile game this year, and you guys know, I don't play a lot of mobile games, and I certainly don't pay for a lot of mobile games, so it takes something extra extraordinary to get me to do both. And certainly, I found Reigns to be extra extraordinary, combining a choose-your-own-adventure style with a dating app swipe left, swipe right interface, sprinkle in some roguelike, roguelite type stuff, you find yourself trying to keep your king alive as long as possible while everything else in the game world is conspiring to give him a gruesome and bloody end. The more you die, the further you progress. The more endings you get, the more cards you obtain, the more paths are open to explore. And the runs are short enough that it really nails that feeling of, okay, I screwed up here, I think I know where I screwed up, I think I know where the balance should be, give me one more run, and then all of a sudden it's like two hours later. It is not often that I recommend mobile phone games on this show, but I think Reigns is fantastic. It's like a dollar right now, so what do you have to lose? It's pretty cool. Go check it out. Brutal is a game that certainly lives up to its namesake. They are taking all of the classic roguelike tropes and translating them into an action-adventure game somewhere in the vein of a Diablo. This is introducing the ASCII games to a new generation. And if you've played those old games, it is kind of introducing a new spin on all those different mechanics. And like most roguelikes, I'm probably not going to finish it, but I had a hell of a time trying. And I think that even if you don't have the nostalgia for this era of games, it is certainly a meaty enough hack and slash to hold your attention for at least a couple of hours. In any event, if you don't have a PS4 where it is currently PS4 exclusive, I'm pretty sure it's coming to PC at some point soon-ish. And at the very least, visually, it's one of the coolest things I've played all year. Continuing on that three-quarter overhead roguelike train, we have Neon Chrome, a game that is so damn stylish, I couldn't help but love it. Now, unlike the other roguelikes on this list, this one has a more traditional level of progression to your character. Which is to say that when you die, you're not going to lose everything because you gain money and use that money to upgrade your stats so that eventually, given enough time, you will finish this game. Now, of course, when you finish it, the whole thing resets, it gets harder, and you go again. But if you're tired of banging your head up against these really cool roguelikes and never actually finishing one, Neon Chrome might be the one for you. Regardless of where you play it, either PC, PS4, or Xbox One, the cyberpunk visuals and aesthetic are fantastic. And hey, if you have a PS4 Pro and you have a 4K TV, you can play it in 4K. The only VR game to make my list this year is I Expect You to Die a phenomenal escape room puzzle VR game. They took a core concept that I think works so well in virtual reality and wrapped it in this spy fiction that is just incredibly engrossing and fun to play. Now granted, once you figure out the solutions to the puzzles, they all seem pretty short, but the entire conceit of the game is actually working through those puzzles and trying to find out those solutions and that could take you 30 minutes to an hour per puzzle. 
which granted still leaves the game feeling a bit short, but I think that the overall experience is so engaging and so engrossing that it is certainly worth the asking price. Having played through a number of PSVR games since it launched back in October, this might be my favorite experience of the year. Here's hoping we see more cool stuff from Shell Games, they certainly have my attention. I'm not really sure what to say about Inside that wouldn't just spoil the whole thing. This is Play Dead's follow-up to Limbo like five, six years later. Quite possibly one of the most polished 2D puzzle platforms I've ever played in my life. Inside is truly a testament to giving a team enough time and budget to execute on their vision. I don't know what Play Dead does after this. I don't know if you can do this whole experience a third time. Limbo inside and then do it again? Take another five years and make another finely crafted 2D puzzle platformer? Regardless, whatever they do, I will be there day one. Inside has proven that they still have the magic that made Limbo so amazing. And no, I'm not going to spoil the ending, you just have to play it. Moving on from spiritual sequels to actual sequels, we have Box Box Boy, the sequel to my number one digital game of 2015. And I know what you're thinking. If this game was the sequel to your favorite digital game last year, how is it not number one this year? Well, above anything else, I value originality. And I love sequels, but sequels give you more of what you want, and I'd rather put original games above sequels. Even though Box Box Boy is an amazing puzzle game, and if you liked any of Box Boy, certainly pick up Box Box Boy. And apparently there will be a third Box Boy game with a Box Boy amiibo, and you know I'm all over that. But like any good sequel, Box Box Boy takes that original formula, expands upon it, and gives you more of what you want, more boxes, more brain-bending puzzles, and more satisfying, polished gameplay. If you have a 3DS, Box Box Boy should be on your list. And if Nintendo does not localize that third Box Boy game, they're gonna be on my list. And speaking of sequels, we have Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, aka Ace Attorney 6. Certainly a game I would love to have on my physical list, but once again, Capcom are assholes. But on the bright side, at least they did localize it, even though all the marketing was like, hey, Phoenix and Maya, Phoenix and Maya, and you got very little of Maya. Even an average Ace Attorney game is still gonna be heads and shoulders above a whole lot of games that I played this year. Now, I'm not sure how much I can actually recommend this game if you haven't played any of the other games in the series. I'm not sure how good of a starting point it would be into Ace Attorney. Certainly, there is the Ace Attorney trilogy you can get, so if you've never played any of them, I would say pick up that one first. But as an Ace Attorney game, this is another solid entry in the series, and I had a hell of a time solving those cases. Now then, Capcom, where is the great Ace Attorney? You just announced a sequel in Japan, where's the original? Please localize it? I know that you kind of hate money, but come on. Every year on this digital list, there are going to be some games that just come out of nowhere that I had never heard of last year, I was not even anticipating, and end up surprising the hell out of me, and Slay Away Camp was one of those games this year. You're taking that amazing 80s horror movie aesthetic, pairing it with a phenomenal sliding puzzle game, and it's just that pineapple apple pen of video games. And yes, I am aware that reference is going to date this video in like five years, but whatever. Regardless, you know I love a good puzzle game. You know I love good and bad horror movies. And this was just one of the fresh surprises that I had never expected and now put this studio on my radar for their future games. Not to mention putting out reasonably priced DLC pretty soon after launch. In any event, given the price of this game, given just how many stages they give you, it is an amazing value, an awesome puzzle game, and highly, highly recommend it. And that brings us to my number one digital game of the year, which should come as no surprise to anyone who was following this channel a couple of months back 
That's right, it's Enter the Gungeon, baby! So yes, it's another three-quarter overhead twin joystick roguelike, but it is the best three-quarter overhead top-down twin joystick roguelike of the year. It is a game that had me coming back every day for just one more run in the Gungeon, and it is the only roguelike I actually took the time to finish this year. Now granted, I didn't get the true ending, I didn't kill all the pasts, but damn it, I beat the dragon and got that achievement. Not only is it amazingly crafted, not only is it highly polished, not only is it super satisfying to play, they're putting out free DLC, which is available in beta right now, out officially, I think, in January. The post-launch support has been fantastic, and like all of the best roguelikes, it gives you that sense of personal progression. You're not progressing your character, you yourself are getting better at the game. Now, unfortunately, given my schedule, I could not put in as many hours as I would have liked to put in. Because certainly, looking back at games like Spelunky, I put in a lot of hours to finish those games all the way. But this, I did about 30, 32 hours, which seriously, for me, for one game in a year, is still a whole lot. So if you have yet to enter the Gungeon yourself, if you have any minimal interest in this genre at all, it is my number one digital game for 2016. So that wraps up digital, that wraps up day one. Tune in tomorrow for my top 10 retail games, games and boxes for 2016. I'm Attack Slug, thanks for watching, more videos every day. And I'll see you next time, right here on this channel, and I'm out.